Okay, so coming to the starting introduction of mental retardation, as you all know, first of all, mental retardation is childhood disorder, that is, it affects children. So the definition used most often in US or United States of American Association is, this is the definition, which is uh, most of the time we use uh, this definition, which is given by American Association association on mental retardation it says that we, the children with mental retardation have sub average uh, general intellectual functioning which will affect in their uh, adaptive behavior right so we will understand what this definition means in detail and according to aamr that is american association on mental retardation uh, mental retardation is a disability that occurs before age 18 so whenever you uh, whenever you start diagnosing children with mental retardation after 18 means it is not mental retardation we cannot diagnose children after 18 as mentally retarded say for why because mainly this is a developmental disorder when you look at the child itself, you will get to know that there is some problem with the child because mainly uh, the child will not be able to talk to you properly or they will not be able to mainly communication and then they cannot think properly, decide properly, their, cognition, their cognitive ability will be hampered to a greater extent, to an extent that they cannot learn how to go to, I mean, the toilet training itself will become very problematic. They do not know how to wear a dress, how to comb their hair, how to eat, and then where, should, where, where do they need to go? for you know washroom then when should they go and even if the saliva is drooling it will be difficult for them to wipe it so they are not completely normal children right so that is why it has come under the abnormal category wherein children needs care and treatment and it, this is the, not diagnosed after 18 because after 18 uh, even before 18 itself we will get you know, from the child from the childhood days itself we will get to know the symptoms are very much evident right so from the child when the child is born after three years or four years we will get to know with the help of their activities normal children they tend to attract you they tend to show their happiness they show their sadness emotions and all of it but these children will be disturbed mentally and even if you teach them anything they will not be in a position to learn so this is characterized by significant limitations in intellectual functioning and adaptive behavior as expressed in conceptual, social and practical adaptive skills. So we'll understand about this even more in detail. So it is diagnosed through the use of standardized tests of intelligence and adaptive behavior. See, whenever we say that, okay, this child has mental retardation, First of all, clinical psychologists will have to give their consent that this child has mental retardation and they will conduct a lot of tests that is called a standardized test of intelligence, right? So intelligence tests will be conducted and adaptive behavior tests will be conducted and only then we can correctly say that yes the child is mentally retarded if the iq is below some number which what is the number we will look into it later and aamr points out that both functioning and adaptive behavior are affected positively by individualized supports so most of the time caretakers are very much necessary for these children uh, without caretakers it is very difficult for them to manage themselves children will not become independent on their own except for mild level of mental retardation and now uh, what are the assumptions which are essential to apply this definition Right. So first of all, when do we call that the child is mentally retarded? Limitations is limitations in present functioning must be considered within the context of community environments, typically of the individual's age, peers, and culture. So whenever we are talking about abnormality, we will compare 
uh, the child's functioning with that of their peer groups and that of their age groups or the culture. So when all the children are behaving in one particular way, when they are showing cognitive development and then they are able to do their math calculations or they are able to understand the language, if there is a child who is not able to do all of these then there is some problem in the behavior, right? So that is why there is, first of all, one, that is, there is limitation in present functioning. And then comes the valid assessment, considers cultural and linguistic diversity, as well as difference in communication, sensory, motor, and behavioral factors. Now, English has become a very prominent language, right? So all of us talk in English and then it's, it has become an essential part of our communication and also job. Now, even in school also children speak English. However, if the child is not learning English, it does not mean that the child is mentally retarded. Or if the child is not do understanding only math, then it does not mean that the child has mental retardation, right? So significantly, it has to have effect on the child's functioning, right? So valid assessment should be there. And also it has to be culturally appropriate. Now, imagine that a child is from a tribal background or a village background. You go and ask the child some stupid questions, which is of higher level. Right. So at that time, obviously, the child will not be able to answer it well. So that time it is not right for us to diagnose the child as intellectually deficient deficit. Right. So therefore, culturally valid questions must be asked. That is assessments and uh, within an individual limitations often coexist with strength. So we need to understand that the individual will have a lot of limitations, but at the same time, even the strength of, strength also matters, right? So there will be some strength. It is important for the parents and the caretakers to identify what is that strength. And an important purpose of describing limitations is to develop a profile of needed support. So very important purpose. Now, why we are trying to list out the limitations first is so that we can develop a profile of needed support. So what all support system does, the, does, does this child require? See, all of them are not the same. Children who are mentally retarded show different behaviors based on varieties of problems or the stimulus or the uh, changes in the brain functions, right? So we cannot consider that only one child, one behavior or the same behavior is seen in so many children. Right. So therefore, it's important for us to understand what are the limitations that this particular child has and plan the support accordingly and with appropriate personalized support. So that word is important over a sustained period. The life functioning of the person with mental retardation generally will improve. So if at all the parents get to know that their child is mentally retarded, there will be a lot of denial in the beginning. They will not accept that, okay, this, my child has mental retardation. They will not be able to grow, think, or play just like other children. So slowly, once that denial stage comes down, it is very important for the counselors to talk about personalized support, right, over a period of, and once that personalized support is given to the child who is mentally retarded, they will improve. Again, it is dependent upon the level of the intellectual quotient, right? So if it is mild and moderate level of mental retardation, then surely they can become independent to certain extent. But if it is severe and profound, then it will be very difficult for children to improve. So let's first of all understand what is this mental retardation? Why intelligence? What is this mild, moderate, severe? profound category of mental retardation. So before that, for you to understand what is mental retardation, you will have to first of all understand what is intelligence. So all of you would have learned about intelligence or you would have 
come across a term called as intelligence right so you know that okay this person is intelligent that person is intelligent you would have heard all these things right so intelligence is the key attribute to know how individuals are different from each other given a problem right so it could be any problem for that matter the way i solve it is completely different from the way my friends solve it right so therefore it all depends upon the intelligence of a person and commonly what we call this intelligence as it is the mental alertness or ready wit say so suddenly you are very vigilant about something or quickness to learn and grasp and ability to understand relationships right so how quickly you are able to grasp whatever you are listening to or reading to and what is your ability to understand the relationships and oxford definition says that it is the power of perceiving learning understanding and knowing now when we talk about psychological definitions of intelligence we have varieties of psychologists who has given the definition of intelligence so alfred binet was the first person to conduct intelligence tests so he says that intelligence is the ability to understand well judge well and reason well so how good are you at understanding or processing the information and then without any assumption see most of the time we assume certain things even though it is right or wrong correct so here intelligence is the ability to understand well whether it is actually right or wrong and then judge well and reason out well and david weschler says that so we have something called as weschler's intelligence scale which is beautiful test it's a performance oriented test so he says that uh he explained the intelligence in terms of functionality that is how we function and the value for adaptation to environment so he says that intelligence is the global capacity everybody has this capacity to think rationally that is with reasons if we are thinking okay i did this because she did this because right so think rationally act purposefully without even you know not wasting our behavior we will have to have one goal and act purposefully and to deal effectively with his or her environment so when we when we are dealing with the environment we need to deal effectively whatever work you do it has to be effective so when we are doing all these three things correctly then we are considered to be an intellectual individual according to david weschler now moving on gardner and sternberg again these two people are very um pioneers in the concept while giving or talking about intelligence so they say that intelligent individual not only adapts to the environment but also actively modifies or shapes it so most of the time um, you would have heard about the term adjust right so from your place to you will move to another place you will have to adjust there and just imagine that you are studying now and then you will have to go and um, stay in the hostel you will have to adjust there now you are all alone you want to get married and you will have to get adjusted in the in laws place or some or the other adjustment keeps happening but during the course of that adjustment how well do you adjust right so how well do you adapt to the environment it can also be climate change or any other change even the corona pandemic it was only it was nothing but changing the environment right so how did we all adjust we intellect we are intellectual individuals and we got adapted properly right so individuals intelligence means it is not only about intel you know adapting it's not only about adjusting but also modifying or shaping it so sometimes you cannot actually adjust to the environment with some or the other reasons so what do you do you will change that particular environment you will probably it could be the way you are behaving in the hostel imagine that your hostel roommates are very bad so at that time we cannot adjust to the situation so what do you do you will 
modify it how do you modify it you may go and complain or you may go and you know talk to them convince them that please don't do this i am not liking right so you it is not only about adjusting but it is also about actively modifying or shaping the environment so intelligence includes these of the definitions given by psychologists so let us now understand the concept of iq now intelligence is represented by intellect intelligent quotient just like how we say that okay if we have a fever which is greater than 106 degree greater than 100 or 90 degrees or something we say that the person has very high temperature right so likewise when do we say that the child is mentally retarded in terms of scores we need to quantify something right so how do we measure that that is mainly through the help of intellectual quotient it's called as iq right the scores obtained from and how do we get this iq we will do some test say for example um you go to a doctor okay and then you get to know that your uh, friend's mother or someone has diabetes now how will you get to know that diabetes there will be some average number and then if the sugar level is going above that then we call it as high blood sugar right so high glucose level and if it is going below that then we call it as low glucose level right so just like that intelligence scores we have something in the average in the middle right and anything about that the person will be genius highly intellectual person below that will be calling them as mentally retarded so the scores obtained we will administer a lot of tests on the child say intelligence test and also adaptive test and only then after the scores the psychologist will decide that yes this child has mental retardation it has to be given by trained professionals only and standardized tests must be used and mental retardation is generally thought to be present if an individual has an iq test score of approximately 70 or below so any score of iq below 70 is considered to be having an intellectual deficiency right and how do we calculate this iq just in extra information so iq is equal to the ma by ca into 100 so here ma is the mental age of the child with the help of administering the test we'll get to know at what level the child is functioning and ca is the chronological age of the child that is what is the biological age we all celebrate our birthdays and when they ask they are the, when, when someone asks ask you your age you will tell my age is um, say 25 or 30 or something so that is the biological age or the chronological age so ma by ca into 100 will give you the score of the iq okay and then moving on so that is the concept of iq now what is the concept of this adaptive behavior so all of us have certain skills right so certain concepts and so many things so that we function well in our um, as immediate surroundings we get adjusted to the surroundings adaptive behavior is the collection of conceptual social and practical skills that have been learned by people in order to function in their everyday lives right when it is getting late we get up early and then we bathe and then we get ready very quickly right early morning we brush our teeth and only then eat and then uh, we will groom ourselves we know what to keep inside the bag when you are going to an exam hall right and you know when to eat you know when you are hungry so all these are nothing but adaptive behavior right significant limitation but here with for children with mental retardation there will be significant limitation in adaptive behavior which will impact a person's daily life and it will also affect the ability to respond to particular situation or to the environment uh, say if if there is a hot um say if there is a fire okay we will not go and put our hand inside that fire right so here your adaptive behavior is functioning well however for children with mental retardation these there is lot of limitations in this particular area 
and limitations like following some of the other uh, limitations could be conceptual skills they will not be able to conceptualize say a receptive or expressive language reading and writing money concepts if you so you know that if it is if the price of something is 100 rupees i mean 50 rupees and then you give them 100 you mean you need to get back 50 rupees right so this is the money concept simple but children with disability will not be able to understand this also and social skills so these are the conceptual skills social skills like interpersonal or being empathetic showing love care support to others all these things are completely absent and responsibility also will not be able to take any form of responsibility self-esteem it is not gullible or navy follows rules and obeys laws and avoids victimization so all these things are the limitations there is lot of significant le lower level of self-esteem the concept of strength weakness children cannot understand all these things right good behavior bad behavior so these concepts are very difficult for them to understand and practical skills like personal activities of daily living such as it could be eating dressing movement and toileting all these things will have a greater impact as i told you the child will not be able to eat it will not know that i have to dip my spoon inside the bowl or the tape something and eat right so that is how it happens and instrumental activities of daily living such as preparing meals taking medications using the phone managing money using transportation and doing housekeeping activities occupational skills maintaining a safe environment all these things are completely hampered right and a significant deficient in one area impacts individual functioning enough to con constitute a general deficit in adaptive behavior so all these are completely hampered or it's a kind of limitation for children who are mentally retarded so it could be adaptive behavior or it could be conceptual skills practical skills and also various instrumental activities which they will not be able to perform now moving on to the developmental disabilities act so what does this act tell us all about is that it is contributable to a mental or physical impairment or a combination of those impairments it is attributable right so mental retardation we can call it as a physical it is something major it's a attributable to mental or physical impairment and it occurs before the age 22 so here they are not completely talking about mental retardation but generally they are talking about developmental disabilities but you need to remember that mental retardation will occur before 18 and it is likely to continue indefinitely there is no complete cure as such right so if we get fever if you take one tablet the fever will reduce and you will be able to function normally but for children with mental retardation or developmental disabilities that's not the case it's only about management and bringing some improvement in their day-to-day -day activities and this results in sustained uh, substantial functional limitations in three or more of the following areas so what one is self-care as i told you say now if a mosquito is biting us what do we do we will hit and we will kill it right so that is also not there they'll not be able to do any of this they'll just get irritated but they don't know that the concept where the mosquito is coming it will prick us and it will suck our blood so those concepts are not there and they'll not comb their hair they don't know to take bath they can't dress properly right so decide which dress which jewel will match that entire self-care is completely absent receptive and expressive language so how they take in the language and how they express it these are also completely hampered learning whatever new things are there so it could be even the academic learning or learning new language or learning new skill 
such as how to ride a bicycle or how to cook or how to ride how to drive all these things are completely ha hampered mobility also sometimes children will not be able to move properly right they'll be completely bedridden and self direction is also hampered see we will talk to our own self right so we have our own way of communicating with each other but that is also completely absent and capacity for independent living is completely absent except for mild cases if it is mild mental retardation with proper support we can only make them independent that to not completely independent just that they'll be able to um, you know lead their life to some extent and economic self sufficiency is also limited they'll not be able to independently work get lakhs together earn lakhs together have a family properly all these things are not there right and it reflects the individuals and need for a combination and sequence of special interdisciplinary or generic services individualized supports and other forms of help that are of lifelong or extended duration and are individually planned and coordinated so lifelong support so complete care given and it has to be individually planned as every child is different it has to be individually planned so before the age of 10 an infant or a child with developmental delay may be considered developmentally disabled if it meets all this criteria without any intervention and many states use different definitions for developmental disabilities based on earlier ver version of the federal law so earlier there was a different a small change in this particular law but now this law has these five points okay. now uh, moving on to the classification of people based on iq you can see that 90 to 109 is considered to be average and uh, below 80 to 89 is low average 70 to 79 is borderline and below 70 we call it as mentally challenged or mentally retarded so this is the spectrum of an iq right so on the other end is very superior iq which has above 130 knowledge so variations in intelligence is what we have seen here these are the children just wanted to show you the picture and on one end of the spectrum with completely low iq whereas on the other hand is a picture where people have super iq that is high iq very superior level of intellectual quotient okay and intellectual deficiency uh, this is the definition which is very important mentally challenged we also call them as mentally challenged or intellectually deficient or uh, mentally retarded and it, they'll have lot of difficulty even in learning simple skills and aamd that is american association of mental deficiency they say that this is the definition of mental retardation that is significantly sub average general intellectual functioning existing concurrently with deficits in adaptive behavior and manifested during the developmental period so it is significant right it is very important sub average that is below average general intellectual functioning so general intelligence whatever is there below that children will have iq and it will have problem in adaptive behavior and changes during the developmental behavior developmental period right so these changes are noticed during the developmental period and those who can be thought to work and what is the range of this mental retardation in the mental retardation there is four ranges so one is those who can be thought to work and function with special attention only after lot of effort lot of support right so only then they will be able to function properly and on the other hand is ones who require institutional care throughout their lives so they'll be completely bedridden Okay, so for everything they would require help. 
So now coming to the DSM criteria for mental retardation, it says that deficits in intellectual functioning, this includes various mental abilities such as reasoning, problem solving, planning, abstract thinking, judgment, right? So reasoning. Now, all of you know why you are attending this class or why you are listening to the lecture because you want a degree and then you want some knowledge, you want to write an exam. So there are various reasons and there are so many reasons behind every action that we take in. And problem solving is when you encounter something which you will be able to solve a problem. Say there is a traffic jam, what alternative things can you do? Or you say you are a person who procrastinates so many things. So what will you do? Right? So there is problem sol solving and then comes planning. Okay, it could be budget planning or study planning or what do you want to do next? That kind of planning, setting goals, right? And abstract thinking judgment that right? all these things are very important but there is deficits in these abilities academic learning also so ability to learn in school it is very very difficult for children to study and experiential learning is also there is some deficit that is the ability to learn through experience trial and error and observation see most of the time you will not learn everything in school Correct. So experiences matter a lot and with the help of experience only you will learn so many things. So that is called as experiential learning, trial and error and learning through experience and error. So this is the DSM criteria and it also says that it is not only about the cognition, it's also about social learning right so that is observational learning the concept of social learning was given by albert bandura he conducted bobo experiment bobo doll experiment and he said that children will observe and learn a lot okay so if children notice that you know his parents are holding their hands and greeting everyone all the time the child will also learn that if the child has seen their parents you know uh, doing puja to god offering something the child will also follow that so that is observational learning but for children with mental retardation observational learning is completely hampered okay social skills are actually necessary for the success but that is also hampered and they also affect academic learning it is not only about cognition or the emotions or whatever in all the adaptive but academically that is even in the school they cannot first of all go to school normal school at all they will have to be taken to a special school so we learn useful things and knowledge through formal education but then these children cannot be a part of formal education it makes them it it's very difficult for them to comprehend whatever is there in the education system therefore only with the help of uh, activities basic things are thought that too only for children who has mild and moderate disorder and in addition to learning problems limited intellectual functioning affects social and emotional functioning also so they will show a lot of temper tantrums sometimes and that sometimes the child like innocence trust wonder and sincerity can be quite charming but then that is not there right so very same qualities make people vulnerable to victimization and cruelty so sometimes what happens these are the children who becomes victimized for so many crimes right so that is one thing so this is about mental retardation and now we will look at the causes or the causal factor now even before this i just want to tell you the levels of mental retardation yeah so before this i'll just tell you the levels of mental retardation and then go to the causes so when we are talking about the levels of mental retardation below 70 we call them as mental retarded mental retarded there is a concept called as mild moderate severe and profound mild is something where 
in the mental retardation level it is something like okay manageable part so that is called as the mild mental retardation and when we talk about moderate it is something little more severe than mild severe means third level right so it is even more greater and mild moderate severe and profound mental retardation means the child will never be able to be or function independently okay so now what is this mild mental retardation what happens during mild mental retardation is that ch uh, children will be able to get education only up to fourth standard or sixth standard so whatever or how the child behaves is that of a fourth standard level whether he becomes an 18 years old or a 20 year old or a 30 year old he will still be considered as a child which means his uh, behavior will be considered as that of a small child right we can educate them to certain extent and we can make them be little independent okay so that is for mild mental retardation and for moderate level of mental retardation we can train them on various skills that's all we cannot educate them right so you cannot teach them anything you cannot teach them numbers alphabets fruits concepts nothing like that you can just try but then it's very difficult right so these children we can just train them on the normal day-to-day -day activities right so we can train them and then little bit of independence can also be given or can also be said uh, can also be attained if proper training is given and for severe mental retardation children will have to be under supervision all the time if they want to go to washroom or if they have to eat if they have to take bath if they have to use toilet most of the time caretakers will have to be there there will be a lot of immaturity in them and profound is both severe and profound are the same case just the difference is that in profound mental retardation the children will not even have proper lifespan they will continue they are very much vulnerable physically also they will be very much vulnerable and uh, they will not survive for a longer period of time so that is for profound mental retardation and now what could be the causes for children to become mentally retarded there are n number of causes we cannot simply say that yes this is one particular cause which is causing mental retardation so the first cause is down's syndrome down's syndrome was uh, understood by a person called as long and down so he said that down syndrome is a chromosomal abnormality right so chromosomal abnormality because of which children will become mentally retarded there will be problem in the 21st chromosome and because of which if you see the children with down syndrome you can just oh, notify I, I i mean get to know about them very easily that there is some problem with the child but then they are very close they become very emotionally attached to people right but then they are intellectual problem will be there fetal alcohol syndrome is if the mother is consuming alcohol on a daily basis to a greater extent when she is pregnant right so at that time it will affect her baby who is going to be delivered and that will cause mental retardation in children congenital infections is when the child is born through that process itself whenever when a child is born with infections we call it as congenital infections and then uh, there is something called as uh, neurocutaneous disorders so what are these neurocutaneous disorders when there is a problem uh, so this is a kind of uh, disorder where children will have problems in the brain the spinal cord mainly the neural neural pathway the neural the neurons and the skin right so organs spinal cord skin bones all these things will be affected and it can also cause tumors and it will grow in these areas 
right and lead poisoning so if when the baby is in the mother's womb so it's very very important for the pregnant women to take care otherwise these kind of things are very common so lead poisoning can happen and fragile x syndrome can also be seen so fragile x syndrome is nothing but a weak x chromosomes will be observed and that will also cause mental retardation or any kind of brain malformations right so the probably in the structure of the brain or in the function of the brain if there is any malformation imagine that during the developmental period the child falls from a greater extent and there is some problem in the child's brain or whenever the child, when the baby is getting delivered if there is forcep which has been used very hardly to remove the child from the womb at that time also there will be errors or there will be malformation inborn errors of metabolism so whenever uh, during the child it's uh, during the i mean during the developmental period itself whenever the metabolism is happening when there is no proper nutrition given at that time say the child is eating but then it is not getting metabolized or when there is protein energy malnutrition when the child is not getting sufficient food to its age for the growth at that time also children can become mentally retarded so these are the major and the main causes of mental retardation and now after this yeah moving on to the treatment part of the mental retardation first of all um parents will be under lot of denial stage first of all they will not take the child to the hospital at all for diagnosing that is one group of parents another group of parents they will take the child for the assessment part but then they will not be able to accept that the child has mental retardation and the third group of people they they will go through lot of trauma because yes they they will have to look after the child till they die right the child will be completely dependent on them and how do they face the society so these kind of you know trauma will go through all the time and it will be there in their in parents head right so treatment for such children now once the parents get to know that the child has mental retardation the counselor will also check for other problems right if the child has any physical deformities or any physical problem or will the child has anxiety issues or attention issues or the child has down syndrome so all these things will be taken care of and comorbidity conditions all these things will be listed down or tested and the child's uh, immunity all these things will be taken care of and then a counseling one round of counseling for parents will also happen many number of counseling sessions will have to happen to the parents because otherwise they will experience caregiver stress right burnout kind of and then child children will have to be immediately taken to the special schools for understanding so here in the special school based on their mental ability task will be given not based on their chronological age because their chronological age would be 14 or 15 years but then they will be behaving like 5 years or something right so therefore treatment should be planned in such a way that it will match their chronological age and not the mental age small small activities say for example if the child says a when the teacher is teaching a and when the child also says a after many time times of rehearsal then the child when the teacher will have to use some positive reinforcement which is nothing but food for children right or token economy system can also be used here mainly to modify the behavior of the child so these things are very very important when we talk about the treatment part behavioral therapy works wonders but then every day whatever the child has learned he or she will have to repeat it otherwise whatever the teacher has thought everything will go in vain 
right? So teacher will have to repeat it again in the next class and the parents will also have to keep on repeating it in the home. So caregivers, parents, parents are the first people with whom children spend a lot of time with, right? So therefore, we'll also have to teach the parents how to say no to the child when the child is they are not showing temper tantrums or not listening how will you treat them and if they are listening to you if they are functioning properly and then they are listening to you how will you give the treatment to the to them all these things will have to be taken care of properly and only then after that they will be able to improve properly even the feeding also it's very important for allowing the child to feed himself or herself rather than parents feeling sorry for the child and doing the child's work by themselves right so too much of care is also harmful so it's very important to take care of the child in a level which is important for the child right so this is about the treatment part we will look into the treatment part in detail in the next class as well so we'll quickly revise these concepts of uh, mental retardation so here we discussed about the introduction part so what is mental retardation and uh, by which age mental retardation will be taken care of or uh, understood or diagnosed and then if we have to say that yes the child has mental retardation then what is the criteria and what is the age group Right. So functions, uh, the limitations should be in academic functioning, general functioning, adaptive behavior and the other functioning also overall developmental problem it is. And then the intelligence also, mainly the intelligence is hampered here. Right. Other In other uh, disorders, there is no problem with the intelligence. Say, for example, in uh, learning disability, especially children will not be mentally retarded. They know they take they can take care of themselves, just that their school performance will be hampered. And these are the disorders. Alfred Binney's, um, I mean, inter I mean, the definitions of intelligence. Right, and uh, we also understood about what is IQ and what is the formula to calculate IQ MA by CA into 100. And when do we call it as mentally retardation? What do you mean by adaptive behavior? Right, so adaptive behavior could be conceptual skills, social skills, practical skills, and also the social emotional skills. Right, so maintaining all that and then. When do we call that? Yes, the child has developmental disabilities. And these are the classification of people on the basis of IQ. There is a normal range, which is 90 to 109, which most of the people fall under, right? And this comes high average, superior, very superior. Likewise, there is something called as mental retardation, where children will have below 70 IQ, and even under this also, there is bifurcation. That is mild, moderate, severe, and profound mental retardation. Mild means it is very simple way of retardation, whereas profound means institutional care is required. And most of the time, their lifespan is very low that they will die. And these are the variations of intelligence completely the opposites of the poles, it's like bipolar, right? So one is completely genius, whereas the other end, children will not even know whether, uh, how they need to clean themselves or um, how I should go to toilet now or I should eat right now and all of that. So this is the definition, very important definition, significantly sub-average general intellectual functioning existing concurrently with deficits in adaptive behavior and manifested during the developmental period, right? So this is very, very important. It is seen only during the developmental period of the child. 
uh, other examples for developmental period problematic behavior is learning disabilities autism all these things are developmental problems only. and this is the dsm criteria for problem so another one is social learning will be hampered and then social learning empathy also is a part of social learning and pro social behavior that is helping others shaking hands right so all these are nothing but social learning and uh, then comes the emotional part formal education sorry formal education cannot be offered to children they, they will have to go to special schools only and then emotional functioning will also be problematic and these are the major causes of child, uh, mental retardation and finally talking about the treatment part behavioral therapy works really well and if the child is very very aggressive at that time some medications could be preferred by the doctor